Hey guys, Amna Nawaz here live in New York. Hey, in case you had trouble keeping up with the headlines over the weekend, don't worry about it for a second. We're going to get you caught up right here. And for that, we're going to go first down to Washington. My colleague Rick Klein joins us from the Washington Bureau, ABC's political director, of course. Rick, thanks for being with us. Hey, Amna, how are you? Uh, so kick it off, my man. Something is happening down on the Senate floor right now. There's already some action. It's not a filibuster, though, right? So what exactly is happening? Well, it's a talkathon. It may look like a filibuster, but there's really nothing that, that Democrats can do to filibuster it because they changed the rules and they can't actually filibuster a nomination. But what this is about is Donald Trump's pick for Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos. It is a polarizing pick, a controversial pick. It has Democrats up in arms. It has at least two Republicans saying they will oppose President Trump. And it has Democrats so committed to this that they plan to spend the next 24 hours controlling the Senate floor, using every procedural means that they have to try to delay this confirmation vote. The short-term hope is that they pick off one more Republican vote and actually send Betsy DeVos down in defeat. It would be an embarrassing setback, Mark, the only uh, actual rejection of a Donald Trump cabinet pick. If that doesn't happen, though, they're hoping that they make this into an organizing effort that might have legs. You've seen the scenes at town halls, at rallies across the country, at airports, people angry about various Trump era policies. And, and this is now a manifestation of that. And if the Democrats can channel that anger they see outside into this fight and get the base organized and get the competitive juices of being the opposition going, they feel like they have a template from here on out. So it's going to be a lot of talking on the Senate floor over the next 24 hours. So, Rick, just one Republican is all they need to be able one to more. stop this? One That's more. That's right. So the, the, the Senate is a 52-48 Republican mm -hmm. edge right now. And two senators, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski, who both represent relatively rural states, Alaska and Maine, they feel like Betsy DeVos's position on charter schools and against public schools is something that, that they've heard from their constituents on. So they have said on record they will oppose. That makes it 50-50. In that case, the tie is settled by the vice president of the United States, Mike Pence. No vice president has ever had to cast the tie-breaking vote for a cabinet official for an appointment like this, so that would mark a first. But if Democrats are able to just find one more Republican to join them, then the, you will not have enough votes for Betsy DeVos to succeed, and, and her nomination will either get pulled or defeated on the Senate floor tomorrow. So, Rick, real quick, because I think a lot of people are scratching their heads over this one. Why is this not a filibuster? Well, filibuster is a, is a means of speaking to of, avoid an action. And under Senate rules on any piece of legislation or even a Supreme Court pick, the 60 senators are needed to cut off debate. That means that as few as 41 can get together and indefinitely delay an actual vote on something. So that's what a technical term for a filibuster is, is using that delay tactic to in delay indefinitely and, and therefore kill a proposal. But what happened last time Democrats were in power under uh, under President Obama early in his second term, they did away with the right for filibusters to take place on cabinet appointments. Uh, in fact, the only nomination vote that still requires 60 votes, that uh, that extra supermajority to break the uh, possible filibuster, is the Supreme Court. So a run-of-the-mill cabinet pick like Secretary of Education, you only need 50 votes. That means that there's really nothing Democrats can do to delay this indefinitely. All they can do is shine a spotlight on the fact that this is going on. So, Rick, you mentioned the fact people have seen polls. They've seen what's going on in the rest of the country. That's why they're paying attention to this. They probably also saw the Saturday Night Live sketch, which featured Betsy DeVos. It feels like once you've risen to SNL mockery status, everybody's talking about you. But what does it say about her in this role? Because, uh, to be clear, I mean, Mr. Trump has several cabinet nominees outstanding uh, in confirmation votes. Has she become sort of the lightning rod, sort of the indicator for how things will go moving forward? Fascinating that this would be the one, because you're right, Omna. It was a whole bunch of unconventional choices for the cabinet. She, first of all, did not handle those confirmation hearings very well. She seemed uh, uh, unaware of basics of what the Department of Education does, and that's what you saw SNL lampooning uh, the other night. Uh, in addition to that, she's been on record as advocating charter schools at the expense of public schools. She said very critical things about the public school system. She has no experience in the public school system or running schools and in in anything like that. So that makes her views even more controversial. But I think something larger is going on here, which is that Democrats are figuring out how to oppose Donald Trump. And what's worked in this case is that education is one of those issues that every family in America cares deeply about because you've got kids in school. Everyone has been through the school system at some level, interacts with the school system at some level. That has made this a, a, an organizing moment. Tens of thousands of letters and emails and phone calls are flowing into Capitol Hill and have been for the last several weeks about this one issue. It shows the power of just plain old organizing. And again, a template perhaps 
of how to oppose Donald Trump, even in this age of Trump, where you have the, 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 the biggest bully of all in the, behind the bully pulpit, the guy that has the loudest megaphone over there, you can still convince members of Congress that this something is not in the interest of their constituents. And that's how the system is designed to work. It's supposed to be that a senator from Alaska, a senator from Maine, makes that independent judgment. So wh again, whether or not we see Betsy DeVos confirmed, I think she's still likely to get confirmed, lacking that third Republican crossing over, it is going to be remembered as a, as a signal event in the early Trump era for how Democrats might find a way to marshal opposition to this new president.